Looking for a great budget camera to start off in astrophotography? Let's discuss the Canon EOS Rebel T7i starting now. Hi there, my name's Dalen. Here at Astro Escape, we go over all things astrophotography, starting from the very beginner level and working our way up from there. If you're new here, if you like what you see as you're watching the video, consider giving this video a thumbs up. Let's get started. When you're looking for a camera to begin your journey in astrophotography, my recommendation is to start with a DSLR. And the reasoning for that is you can start very wide with Milky Way shots all the way into deep sky astrophotography, all with the right accessories. And the bonus here is that it increases your flexibility and eases your learning curve early on. My recommendation after years of use is the Canon EOS Rebel T7i. Averaging at 725 US dollars at the time of recording with a kit lens, this camera comes with quite a few features that astrophotographers would want while they're out there taking their shots. And the first one is a fully articulating flip out screen. This is super useful when the camera is pointed at weird angles. And another bonus here is that this screen is dimmable. However, when you're ready to shoot, you can just flip it around and hide the screen to keep things dark. It has USB control, which is useful when you're using the ASI Air or a laptop with programs such as PHD2. It performs pretty well on nightscape images. There is a large list of lenses to choose from due to APS-C being a popular lens mount. It's also very easy to find a telescope adapter ring or an eyepiece adapter ring. It also has a custom options menu, which helps you enable mirror lockup. That way the mirror stays up in between shots and it's not causing any vibration, which could get things a little bit out of focus. It also comes with a wide range of ISOs starting at 100, and it goes all the way up to 25,600 by default, which is great for framing shots at a very high ISO and then going with the intended ISO after you're done framing the shots. At least that's how I do things. I put it at crazy ISO so I can say, hey, the object's there, and then I set up my program, put it to the ISO I want, and then move on. That's just my process, but let's keep going. And the signal to noise ratio for this camera is actually very good compared to others in this price range. Moving on to a few other pros that aren't necessarily astrophotography related, but are still pretty useful. The first one is this camera comes with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capability, which means you can use Canon's Camera Connect app to control the camera. For daytime use, it's kind of cool. However, at night, I wouldn't recommend using that. I would just use an intervalometer or go with full-on control, such as an ASI Air or PHD2. So if you don't astro modify this camera, it is a great camera just for beginning learning photography in general. It's very lightweight, so it's great for taking on little daytime hikes for nature shots, especially if that nature shot ends in a Milky Way shot at the end of the day. It also comes with some very helpful screens that help beginner photographers understand each mode. It has a 24.2 megapixel sensor, which is great for daytime photography, but this isn't really a factor for astrophotography, so don't worry about that too much. It also comes with multiple modes for every situation. There is a mic input, which is great for recording videos on cloudy days. Speaking of video, Canon has software which enables the camera to be used as a webcam, which is useful for Zoom calls or streaming or YouTube videos. And the large list of lenses I mentioned are generally cheaper than their full frame equivalents. Now, this camera is not all pros. There are some cons. And the first one is, as with most DSLRs, these cameras come with batteries that are not not designed for astrophotography, especially if you're out there doing shots in the winter. They will die. So what I recommend here is either getting an AC adapter or go with a dummy battery pack that can connect to a USB power bank. Now the two that I use are down in the description below. They both work fantastic. I use the AC adapter when I'm using the camera with the full setup. And if I'm just doing some Milky Way shots, I'll use a battery bank. Another huge downside here is that the camera body is not weather sealed. So this can be a huge problem if you're gonna be out there on dewy nights. If you feel that it is gonna be a problem, either use dew heaters or you can also, after having everything framed up, put some sandwich bags around the camera and then just use gaffer tape to seal it all up and gaffer tape won't leave any residue. Like all other DSLRs, this camera does not come with cooling and that limits the length of time your exposures can be before the chip overheats. If you really want to go with really long exposures, you have to go with an actual Astro Cam. DSLRs will not work. Another problem here with this camera is the USB is micro USB 2.0 
which is a technology that's starting to slowly fade away. Cables are getting a little bit harder to find, so when you buy some, make sure you buy multiple, just so you have a couple extra laying around. If you are planning on doing any sports photography with the blast mode, it is a little bit slower than other cameras in this price range. And if you're planning on doing any video, the highest it can go is 1080p at 60 FPS, which is fine because you know, we're not doing 4K videos in astrophotography, but if you do want to take videos or do YouTube videos, I'm locked at 1080p at 60 FPS because that's what I'm recording this on. Either way, this camera is great for the beginner looking to get into astrophotography while keeping the door open for doing some daytime photography, especially with the wide array of lenses and accessories and just the vast customization that you can do with this camera. However, this camera is not for people looking for astrophotography dedicated cameras. Yeah. And like I said, especially if you're looking to push past five minutes with your exposure lengths, it's going to overheat if you don't just go with an astrophotography dedicated camera with cooling. This camera is also not for intermediate astrophotographers with a much higher budget. There are other DSLRs out there with more features that are a little bit more astro friendly. So I do have a question for you. What feature are you looking for in your first camera? Let's discuss that one down in the comments. To sum it up, if you are an absolute beginner, this is a great budget camera to start off with, especially if you are looking to learn other forms of photography as well. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, subscribe, and then hit that little notification bell so that way YouTube does tell you when I upload the next video. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.